We ride a real cycle with abalone. It, it has highs and lows. And the problem is, when we have the lows and the fish bounce back, we've hit them a little bit hard when we should have actually been backing off. Abalone are long-lived, slow-growing, slow-moving snails. So an adult might only move 500 metres in its lifespan. One of the complications with an abalone fishery is that if one local population is diminished, it's probably not going to recover by emigration from the neighbouring populations. Overlay the complexity of abalone fishing on top of that, where fishers might work through one patch and into the next, and they might bypass one because they've swum out a bit wide, it creates quite a, a significant challenge for understanding the abalone fishery itself. What we saw was that many of the divers were expressing more concern about the state of the resource than perhaps our statistics were telling us. They were still spending an hour and a half in the water, they were still uh, getting a couple of hundred kilos of, of abalone, but instead of only swimming a few hundred metres, they were having to swim maybe three or four hundred metres uh, to get that same amount of catch. It was suggesting that uh, there was an additional component of it which we were missing. Abalone are a very resilient creature. You have a fishery and then next year basically you don't have a fishery. They can keep coming out till the very end and then just seem to drop, you know, they just seem to go. But unfortunately when they go, they take a lot of getting back. With some discussions with some of the fishers, we worked out, well, we can, we can tag sharks, we can, we can tag all sorts of uh, seals and other, other organisms, then maybe we could, if you like, tag an abalone boat. So we set about over a period of three to four years to try to track uh, where abalone fishers are working. We've now ended up with a very simple system. It's a, a passive GPS data logger, and we have a small depth logger that captures when they get in and when they get out of the water, and we have a, a, a four-dimensional data stream. The first time we downloaded the data and plotted it up on a map and looked at what the abalone fisheries were doing, it was, a, it was certainly a watershed moment. It was uh, one of those moments, why have we not been doing this for years? Firstly, yes, we want to do a much better job of assessing the state of the fishery. But what we're also able to do with this information is start to understand how parts of the fishery operate in different ways. So why and where some patches seem to be just so much more productive than others. Awesome to be able to go and check out where you've worked, how they're performing over the years, whether they're staying steady or declining. It's a really common feature in abalone fisheries that the divers are very interested in engaging with research, engaging with management, and we see very much an openness of many of the fishers to come and talk to us and share their knowledge and their information. I've been mixed up in the management of it now for six or seven years, and we've made some absolutely terrible decisions in that time, and we've gotten to a stage now where I don't think that can happen anymore. I hope it can't happen anymore. And then that is because of the input of science. If they can see that the use of the technology is making their industry sustainable, then that's jobs for them and jobs for their kids. After working as a researcher in this fisheries, I'm, I'm still as excited about the job as I was 15 years ago. It's been a great fishery for me and I think it can, it can be again a great fishery for a hell of a lot of people.